It sounds ridiculous that there might be any dangers associated with earning too much money. What does that even mean? And I'm not talking about attracting more burglars or thieves or anything just because they know you have more money. Hey, give me all your money. What's that? I said give me all your money. Mmm, no. And I'm not talking about the sort of thing that happens if you win the lottery where everybody starts coming out of the woodwork and starts asking you for money. Hey, Richard, this is Bobby. I heard you just won the lottery. Who? Who is this? It's Bobby. You were in third grade with my uncle's cousin's great grandnephew twice removed. You remember, it's Bobby. I'm talking about a much more insidious and real danger that's spawned once you begin earning a lot of money. Before we start talking about that though, my name is Adam Nelson and I'm brand new here to YouTube. So I'm sure that you're new to my channel as well. So welcome, thanks for watching. I'm so glad that you're here. If you haven't heard about me before, all my videos are about money. Some are educational, some are just for fun, but they all tie back to money in some way. So after this video, you should go check them out. Also, if you like what you see here today, consider subscribing because I have plenty of great content on the way. And if you don't wanna miss a thing, don't forget to hit that notification bell as well. Okay, shameless plug out of the way. Let's get back into it. So what are the dangers of making too much money? There are some obvious ones. If you chase money just for money's sake, that's gonna lead to depression as you realize that you're not any happier as a rich person. And if you don't think that's true, go check out one of my other videos where I talk about just that, whether you're happy or not as you make more money. Or you could just be chasing money at the expense of your familial or other personal relationships and one day wake up and realize that you're all alone and I believe that can cause depression as well. So there are plenty of spiritual and emotional dangers when you're pursuing money that you need to watch out for. But there's one that I had never heard of before that I actually just learned about a couple days ago and there's even a term for it. So leave a comment below. Have you heard of this term before? It's called golden handcuffs. I had never heard of it either until just a few days ago when I was doing research for a different video. And when I learned about this, it really struck a chord. Now, when it comes to handcuffs, I'm typically not one to say no. <laughs> But with golden handcuffs, I really wish that I knew that they existed and I wish that I knew how to avoid them long ago. And I can't believe that I had never heard about them before. Like, why don't we have any sort of financial education courses in high school or general education classes that are required in college? I feel like if we had touched on this topic, I would have been much happier later on in life. But I digress. So golden handcuffs refers to when somebody's making money and they increase their discretionary spending on non-essential items to such a point that they have to continue making a lot of money just to support their new lifestyle. And this may sound to you a lot like lifestyle creep, and it is very similar. For those of you who don't know what lifestyle creep is, it's basically when you start making more money, you spend more money. So you upgrade things that you don't necessarily need, like maybe you get a new car when you don't really need it, or you buy a bigger house than you actually need, or you start buying things like a gym membership that you're never actually going to use. <laughs> Or maybe you get a personal chef or whatever, it doesn't matter. As you get more money, you start spending more money to increase your lifestyle. That's lifestyle creep. But lifestyle creep is actually only half of the golden handcuffs theory. And the other half of the golden handcuffs theory is where the insidiousness that I mentioned before really comes into play. In one of my previous videos, I explore whether richer people are happier. And in that video, I mentioned something called hedonic adaptation. And for any of you who may be unfamiliar with what hedonic adaptation is, it's basically a theory which I find to be true that states with time, no matter what positive or negative events occur in your life, eventually you're not gonna be any happier or sadder than you were when you began. So essentially you always level out to the same level of happiness no matter if you have a good thing or a bad thing happen to you. It just takes some time to get over that thing. So imagine with me for a minute that you begin to make a million dollars per year. Naturally, you're going to improve your lifestyle. You're gonna buy a bigger house probably, a new car, you're probably going to hire people to take care of your yard for you, and let's be real, if you have a million dollars per year, you have a pool in your backyard that needs to be taken care of, so you hire maintenance for that as well because you have much more important things to do with your time. And shortly after you begin making a million dollars per year, you're super happy, everything's going extremely well in your life, and this continues for many years. Until one day, maybe 10 years later, you wake up and realize, oh, I actually hate my job, and I'm very unhappy even though I'm making a million dollars per year. And I know you're thinking, making a million dollars per year and not being happy? Is that even possible? And yes, absolutely it is. It doesn't matter how much money you're making, if you're not happy for other reasons, you can totally be depressed, even if you're making 
making millions of dollars per year. And if you don't believe me, go watch the other video that I keep mentioning in this one. So you're unhappy, and the thing that you want to do would only probably pay you around $100,000, which is nothing compared to a million dollars per year. And you really aren't willing to give up your current lifestyle. So what do you do? And what are you gonna do without a pool in your backyard? And what are your neighbors gonna think if you move to an ungated community? The horror. And so now you realize that if you wanna maintain your lifestyle, you have to also keep your job, which isn't making you happy. And you realize that in actuality, you've been in a pair of golden handcuffs for years. I don't make a million dollars per year, but this can happen to anybody with a high paying job. And at times, I feel like I've fallen into this trap myself. There are definitely parts of my job that I don't particularly enjoy. For example, I experience really high levels of stress from time to time, depending on the project and the deadlines, and if I have to work during a crunch period. But working for one of the top companies in my industry, it can feel extremely terrible knowing that if I ever wanted to change directions and do something completely different, like this YouTube channel, for example, it would be very difficult for me to be able to transition and maintain my current lifestyle. And you may be thinking to yourself, okay, Adam, but not everybody's making as much money as you. And so why are you making this video about golden handcuffs? It's not really pertinent to everybody else. And that's where you'd be wrong. You don't necessarily have to have a high paying job to be locked in a pair of golden handcuffs. In fact, I believe that you could be making minimum wage. And if you're living beyond your means and you're trying to support a lifestyle that you really can't with your current income, that you can be in golden handcuffs. You might have to keep that job just to maintain your lifestyle that you're trying to support. And it could even be to the detriment of your education, something that could get you to a place where you're making a lot more money and where you could support that lifestyle a lot easier. And I really wish that somebody had told me about golden handcuffs long before I started making actual money. I feel like I could have really avoided some of the pitfalls that people can fall into if they're not aware of them. And so this is something that really affects everybody and I feel like everybody can benefit from it. And that's why I'm sharing this video with you today. Okay, so now that you know about golden handcuffs, let's talk about some of the things that you can do to avoid getting in them in the first place. So the first and most important thing you can do is like this video. <laughs> okay, that might not actually help you avoid golden handcuffs, but it would really help me. And seriously, if you enjoy this content and if you've learned something new and if you feel like this will help you in your life, then please help YouTube know that it should promote this video to others so they can benefit from it as well. It also really helps me see that you guys care about what I have to say and it helps keep me motivated to keep making great content. Not to mention, it's totally free. <laughs> also consider subscribing. I've got a lot of great content on the way. And if you don't wanna miss a thing, don't forget to click that notification bell. Okay, so how do you avoid putting your yourself in these golden handcuffs. Well, once you know about them, it's really easy to see when you might be putting yourself in a bad situation and then you can avoid it. Maybe you don't get that super expensive, really big house just because you can afford it. Maybe you instead get something half the size that you can pay off more quickly. And maybe you don't get that brand new car just to match your lifestyle and instead you just keep the one that you currently have until you drive it into the ground and it really becomes unusable. And when you do get a new car, maybe you get a used one instead of a brand new one just to keep the cost down. And maybe the next time you get a pay raise, you just put all that extra money into savings starting from day one. That way you never actually feel like you had a pay bump and that way you can avoid lifestyle creep altogether. And that's actually a really great piece of advice that Lindsay and I try to incorporate into our lives as well. Whenever we get a pay increase or a promotion or anything, we try to put any excess money into savings rather than incorporating it into what we spend from day to day. Another way to avoid golden handcuffs is to avoid chasing jobs just for the amount of money that you can make doing them. Instead, I really suggest that you find something that you truly love to do and something that you think you'll love in 10 or 15 years as well. And if you do that, I feel like as you gain experience, money will follow. You're gonna make that money as you become better and better in that field, whatever it may be, whatever really interests you. Now this could be something like photography or art or making music, or it could be something technical like something that I've chosen. And for me, I feel like when I did decide to be a programmer, that was something that I truly had a genuine interest in, and I still do today. And so if you can find something that you truly enjoy and that you're passionate about, and that makes money, then great, go for that. But one thing to keep in mind is that your interests may change. And that's why I say plan for something for 10 to 15 years, because after 10 to 15 years, who knows what's actually going to hold your interest. You may also want to keep in mind that doing something professionally may change the flavor of the thing that you like to do just for fun. For example, when I was in college, when I was programming, there was a lot less pressure to do things the absolute best way, and there wasn't the need to optimize everything fully. And there was a lot more room just for exploration and having fun. Whereas now in a professional setting, I'm really expected to optimize everything as much as I can to make things run as fast as possible. And there's a lot of pressure on me to do things a lot faster as 
as well. And so just keep in mind that what you love to do outside of work and within a professional setting, the two might be vastly different. And I wanna be extremely clear, I'm not saying not to pursue a job that pays a lot of money. I'm saying try to find something that you actually enjoy doing and that you think you'll enjoy doing for the long term that makes a lot of money as well. That's the ideal situation anyway. And if you do that, and if you continue to live below your means, and that's really a key point, living below your means, then later on, if your interests do change, then you can change your mind and you can transition to doing something completely different and it'll be much easier for you. And that way you can maintain your sanity and your happiness and you won't feel like you're trapped in a pair of golden hands. Handcuffs. Okay, so those were a few ways to avoid getting into golden handcuffs in the first place, but let's say maybe it's a little too late and you already feel like you're in golden handcuffs today. What do you do? How do you get out of them? And the first thing I'm gonna say is going to potentially sound counterintuitive, and it's just to make more money. And I know, I'm with you. I hate it whenever I say just make more money as if it's something really simple to do. I know that it's not. But hear me out. If you were to make more money and you maintain your current lifestyle, then in theory, you're not gonna feel like you're in golden handcuffs anymore. And so maybe for you that means you go and start mowing people's lawns or you start a side hustle like a YouTube channel where you try to make money or maybe you go for a promotion or a better job whatever it is if you start making more money and you avoid lifestyle creep then you're gonna feel like you're more free and there's another thing you can do as well. If you decrease the amount of debt you're in, or if you decrease the amount of money it takes to maintain your current lifestyle, then you're also gonna feel less like you're in these golden handcuffs. And so maybe this means for you that you go and pay off that car loan that you have, or if you can manage it to get rid of your mortgage entirely. If you do that, then you're gonna be paying a lot less per month and have a lot less financial obligation per month, and therefore feel a lot less like you're in these golden handcuffs. You don't need to make as much money suddenly to be able to support your current lifestyle. And this is in part why I ask for support on my YouTube channel. Yes, I make plenty of money at my job, but those days where I'm feeling like I'm in golden handcuffs, it'd be really nice not to have to rely solely on that income. Plus, seriously, some other YouTubers out there are making millions of dollars per year just on YouTube. And so if they're doing it, why can't I as well? If I could get to that point and that level of income from YouTube, then like I said in one of my first videos, maybe I won't be a programmer anymore. <laughs> and just as a disclaimer for anybody watching from work, I'm not planning on leaving my job. I love it. It's a great job, so don't worry. I'm here for the long run. But honestly, if I could get monetized on YouTube and start to put that money towards my mortgage, for example, then that would be a dream come true. And I would feel much less like I'm in these golden handcuffs. And another potential approach is to downgrade your current lifestyle. And to me, this sounds kind of terrible. And I feel like probably for everyone else, nobody really wants to downgrade their lifestyle. But it's also critical that you do what you love. And if we're talking about your overall happiness here, if you have to downgrade just to achieve happiness, wouldn't you agree that's worth it? You've only got one life to live. And so if you're waking up every day hating your job and hating your life, then I really think it's time for some drastic changes. But maybe it doesn't actually have to be so drastic. Maybe you can do some more minor changes as well. For example, if you come up with some sort of transition plan where you can maintain your current lifestyle as you build up some other revenue stream, and then you can transition over to that once it's making you enough money, then maybe that's a wise choice as well. I truly believe that we live in a time where if you're smart enough and clever enough, you can come up with a way to earn money doing exactly what you love the most. Yet another way to avoid golden handcuffs is to remember that they're not actually real. It's just a matter of perception. And so if you feel like you're trapped in a job that may be really high paying but not so satisfying, then go talk to your manager about this. If you're performing really well and if this company is worth staying at in the first place, I feel like your manager is gonna be highly motivated to find a place for you where you're very happy and where you stay at the company. And so I feel like there are more creative ways to get out of these golden handcuffs. Remember, it's all just a matter of perception. So I'm really curious, what are your experiences with golden handcuffs? And did you know that there was a term for them? Do you feel like you're in golden handcuffs now? And do you you plan on escaping them? If so, how are you going to do it? And if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in your guys' stories as well. And do you think there's any tips or advice that you would share with other people about this subject that you think I've missed in this video? If so, let them know in the comments below as well. And just as a side note, I read every single comment that you guys leave, and I try to do my best to respond to all of them too. That's actually one of the really big advantages of still being a really small YouTube channel. I get to find one-on-one -on -one time with all of my viewers. And so if you're watching this early on, take advantage of that, and I'll try to respond to your comments specifically. Thanks for joining me for another video on my channel. I really appreciate the time you guys make to watch these videos, and I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy creating them. And if you do, you know what to do. Thanks again for watching, and until next time. However, from time to pi pime, um, mm, let's not brag too much. I guess some people are just sort of into that kind of thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't go off script too much. It's okay. <clears throat> I hope you guys, no, I appreciate, I won't say that. I don't want to say that. Don't, oh.
Okay, I think that's it. I, I like that last one because it was all cohesive in just one part. So that's a wrap.